everyone. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Scepter C25 curved gaming monitor. I did receive this sample from Scepter, but I want you to know that any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this monitor or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. They walk you through some key tech specs and features. You'll also see on the side here, we have all of our ports and IO. This is a 1080p full HD monitor with 240 Hertz for the refresh rate. You also have a 1500 R curved display and a one millisecond response time measured MPRT. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature consisting of our warranty information. This monitor does come with a one year warranty, customer service and contact card, as well as a full user guide and manual walking us through everything we need to know about our new monitor, how to set it up, how to connect to it, how to use it. They spend a lot of time going through all the menu settings, which is very helpful. You'll also see towards the back, we have this chart right here, letting us know our max resolution and refresh rate for each connection option. So for DisplayPort, you can get 1080p at up to 240 hertz. For HDMI, you can get 1080p also up to 240 hertz. Next, you'll see my favorite item included, the Scepter branded Phillips head screwdriver. I love that they include that. We have our wall mount option here, Visa 75 by 75. We have our three kits of screws, neck screws, wall mount screws, and base screws. Here's a look at the included stand. Two parts, both metal. Then you'll see we have one display port cable, our power supply and adapter, and lastly, the monitor. Let's look at the monitor in more detail. Here's a look at the back side of the monitor. You'll see the Scepter logo and branding front and center. We have two LED lights right here, our stand mounting option, our speaker grills, Kensington security lock. We have additional product information right here. Let's tip it up so you can see our color coded input options. So we got our power, two HDMIs, two display ports, and our audio out. Clearly labeled, I love this feature on all Scepter monitors. Color coded too, so we got HDMI 2.0 for both of those and DisplayPort 1.4 right there. Looking at it from the very bottom, you'll see some ventilation slots here and we have all of our menu and control buttons. Take a peek at the side profile. Let's look at it top down as well. You can see that point on the back there. It's got a lip to it, you can grab and grip it. And get a feel for the curvature. You can see the slight curve of the panel. Maybe from the top, that'll help. And then looking at it from the very front, we have our protective cover. We have HDMI sticker here, Scepter's logo and branding, and all of our menu and control button indicator icons. Now let's go ahead, let's try this out. Monitor's plugged in, powered on, it is connected to a desktop computer, stand setup. We just have basic tilt functionality with this stand. You'll also see connected to Windows, we have our display settings here. We are getting as advertised our 1920 by 1080 p full HD resolution at 240 hertz, technically 240.299 hertz for this display. Now let's go over the menu settings. So the menu button can be found in the bottom right hand corner. You'll see we can bring up the menu options here with our quick icons. Let's select it again and now we have a nice overview of the menu. They've changed the design from the previous typical Scepter menu, but very similar. I'm not gonna go through each individual option. I'm just gonna show you some of the quick settings here because a lot of it can be explained on the side. They have a nice description for you. But here you'll see we have our backlight settings. We have some of just our quick access controls, blue light mode, free sync. You can choose the input and source, image presets, adjust the volume. Then we have this little back button here and that'll take us to the next option. You'll see our picture settings. Let's go into our picture mode. You'll get a feel for what you can adjust. Again, nice descriptions here if you're not sure what a setting is. All of that can be done there. MPRT mode. Let's move right along. We have our color settings here. You can adjust the color temps, gamma, blue light shift again. You have all of that there. Let's go down to our system settings, overdrive, free sync. You'll see some of these settings repeat. OSD, position, volume, mute. And then we have a nice factory reset option there. So really easy and simple menu to navigate with some of your key tech specs right up here at the top, our resolution and our refresh rate. And we have our AMD FreeSync 
off right now. Really quick, I wanted to cycle through the different picture presets. So currently we're in standard mode. You'll see we have a user option where we can adjust whatever we want, followed by movie, eco. You'll see we have FPS, RTS, back to standard. So they all change and tweak the picture quality just a little bit. Very faint, it's hard to tell actually, as I'm looking at it. Usually they're a little bit more pronounced and dramatic than what you're seeing here. We'll keep cycling through one more time. Right here. Just slight nuances, depending on which one you prefer. For me, I still like the standard option, but again, you can literally change that at any time, content to content, right? Game to game anything along those lines. And then don't forget, you can put it in user mode and then you can adjust it even further. Now we have the UFO test pulled up right here. This UFO is moving across the screen at three different FPS values at our 240 Hertz refresh rate. This is why it's important if you can afford it for gaming. And if you have a system or console that's capable of higher performance to get a higher refresh rate monitor. So typically 144 seems to be the sweet spot, but if you love to have that higher refresh rate and to play with greater FPS values, again, because your system can handle it, then you'll really appreciate 240 FPS, buttery smooth compared to 120 and 60, it's definitely noticeable in person. You'll see 60 is a great baseline for your budget monitors. That's basically bare minimum today, 60 Hertz for the refresh rate with our UFO moving at 60 FPS. Then we double that 120 is close to that 144 sweet spot there. And that looks great, nothing wrong with that. But again, you take a pretty nice leap up to 240 Hertz, 240 FPS, and it is noticeable. Is it as noticeable going from 60 to 120? At least for my eyes, I would say no, but there is still an improvement that is visually seen when you jump up from 120 to 240. Next up, you'll see we have a black screen on the display here, and this was helpful when we turned off all the studio lights to see if we had any backlight bleed. Typically on a curved panel, you start to find a little bit up at the top and the bottom where it starts to curve out. In this case, nothing noticeable. So that's the good news. If you like to watch black screens in a pitch black room, I like it a lot. Well, you'll have a very enjoyable experience with this monitor, but in all seriousness, nothing noticeable, nothing glaring or anything along those lines. Now let's talk about color accuracy. So with this monitor, we use display cal here and you can see our findings. Keep in mind, these are just our findings. We don't have the same professional factory equipment that a panel manufacturer would. But in regards to sRGB, our coverage was 98%. Our volume was 107.4%. For Adobe RGB, 71.5% coverage and 74% for our volume. Lastly, DCI-P3, 75.8% coverage and 76 for our volume. And for our Delta E, you'll see our Delta E 2000 right here. Our average was 0.38, which is well within and under the recommended value of one. And for our maximum Delta E 2000, you'll see we got an actual value of 1.03 well below the recommended value of three. Let's move away from some of the technical tests. Let's have some fun just doing the web browsing test as I call it here. We got YouTube pulled up, just their popular trending page. So you'll be able to see how everything looks and loads here. Very nice, fluid, responsive, videos, description, everything looks great as you'd expect. Clear, crisp, easy to read. Obviously the videos will load and play just fine too. Next, if you're not just watching videos or streaming some content, maybe you wanna catch up on the news, learn something new. We have The Verge pulled up right here, a popular tech blog. I like the layouts here, the different images, graphics, embedded ads. Gives you a nice overview again if you want to read and consume some information on the web. Let's go on and click on an article here. Here's a Rivian article. Got a photo, all the different titles, fonts, text, links, you get the idea. But clear, crisp, responsive. And then you'll see lastly, maybe you wanna use this monitor to do some shopping, right? We got Amazon pulled up right here. Looking good. Really nice products load. Everything's as you would expect when you're shopping the web. Now we're testing out the built-in speakers. This is the song Dripping With Ice by Music Chef. Music Chef is home to stream safe music for content creators. 
I want to point out the speakers are currently set to 100. When I adjusted the volume up from 50, the volume really didn't change. So that's fairly common with Scepter speakers. They're nothing special. They're very average, which most people would probably say they're subpar, but that's what they are. They're just internal monitor speakers. They're good enough if you're in a pinch, and I'd always rather have speakers and not use them than need the speakers and not have them, but that's just me. Give it a listen for yourself. I said what I said, good enough if you're in a pinch. So this monitor is equipped with some RGB LEDs on the back as you're seeing right here. This is the spectrum setting and then we can choose our own individual colors. If you'd rather just have your reds, green, blues. Looks like we got about six colors to choose from. They all look really good. I like spectrum the best personally so we can cycle through and see all the colors. You also have an option to change and configure the light mode. So let's go into that. So we can do static. And then you'll see we have our breathing, basically a nice pulse. We have a marquee in. That's pretty cool. I like that. And then you also have a marquee out. So you can pick and choose those for the spectrum or all the individual static colors. Or you can turn everything off. It's really up to you and what you prefer. But it's nice that we have some customization here and the lights look great. Now it's time to test out the input leg using this red box that you see here. Keep in mind, input leg is different from response time. This has a one millisecond response time measured MPRT. That's basically the difference between the amount of time it takes a pixel to change from one color or one shade to another. In this case, with our input leg, this is gonna be the amount of time it takes for the signal to be transmitted and displayed on the monitor itself. So let's see what our values are. All right, up at the top, we're showing 9.9, .9, roughly 10 milliseconds. That's usually our lowest value. Now let's see what the middle holds. About 13.1 milliseconds. And the bottom should be around 16 or so. Right at around 16.2 milliseconds for our input leg. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, let's do some gaming. We'll be testing out Forza 5, Assassin's Creed, and Borderlands 3. Let's pull up the footage.
haven't forgotten about you console gamers, we have a PlayStation 5 connected right here and we'll take a look at our video output information, 1920 1080p at 60 hertz. Keep in mind if you want to try to take advantage of higher refresh rates, make sure you have your 120 hertz output enabled to automatic. So depending on your game, if it supports it, you can experience those higher refresh rates. We know this monitor is capable of that, so that'll be a game by game basis. And for you Xbox users out there, we got the Xbox Series X connected. We're showing 1080p at 120 hertz for our refresh rate. So now let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to this Scepter monitor. Here's what I want to say. It kind of stands alone on its own with the unique 24.5 inch size. I really like it. The curvature is great got some built-in RGB. They could definitely improve the stand on the back. I wish they had a more traditional stand that gave us height till a couple other adjustments. You basic. But this monitor's really only competing with Inceptor's own lineup. If we go up in size to 27 inches, then it does compete price for price with an Innocent gaming monitor. But again, that monitor's larger, this one's smaller, but same 1080p, 240 hertz spec. So it's really up to you. Is there a certain thing about this monitor from the curvature to the 24.5 inch side or the design that you like better? Or would you rather have a slightly larger monitor from a different brand for the same price? Those are really only things that you can decide for yourself. But in regards to the performance, really happy and pleased with this monitor overall. If I'm comparing it to that 27 inch Innocent monitor, I like this stand better, but I would argue that both stands are just very basic. I really wish they gave us height adjustment. I wish they gave us some nice swivel rotation, the ability to put it into portrait viewing. That's definitely lacking and missing with this particular monitor. But the good news is you can use a Visa mount compatible monitor and bring your own stand.